Hey yo, what is up guys, it's Sam. Back on the channel here. Listen, we need some energy in here today guys, because flipping hell. I've been mentally drained all week, I ain't gonna lie. The job is flipping, killing me at this point. I'm making a lot of sales, a lot of moolah. But, the fact of the matter is, it is flipping mentally draining man. And going to the gym every day after work and just training non-stop. So I can be better than you pussies. It's just so hard being someone that has a good life. But anyway, guys, today's topic, something that no one actually talks about in the self-improvement space that has actually been a massive, massive impact on my self-improvement journey. And um, I need to actually share it with you guys, because if I don't, I fear, I fear that many of you may never actually find this hobby and understand how amazing it is and how much it can actually impact your self-improvement journey and your life now before i actually get into this i just want to cover something with you guys not too long ago at work i uh, have a have a sort of a group at work um where a lot of the guys in the group are sort of similar to me you know self-improvement habits they have many different sort of hobbies of themselves but we're all kind of into self-improvement um we were having a group conversation, it was me and two of the other guys, and we were having a conversation about basically what like 10 sort of rules or 10, um, what's the word, 10 skills we believe every man should have. And now I don't believe, I don't remember, well, no, I don't, not that I don't believe, I don't remember exactly what I said, but let's just put it like this. It was something along the lines of being able to drive, being able to shoot, being able to fight, being able to swim, um, being able to sort of survive in nature. So grow your own sort of crops, you know, um, create fire, create shelter. You're going to wonder why I'm keeping this one. I'm saving this one for later. So if you guys want to just uh, take this and put it down there, because I'm actually going to save that one for last. So that was obviously create, be able to survive in nature, um, have charisma, so be able, to, be able to public speak, you know, inspire an audience with stories that you have, um, experience and knowledge um I'm trying to remember more now probably be able to craft certain things i guess that kind of ties in with the nature one though uh be disciplined that was another one be fully con in control of your consciousness so that's in the um sort of the subconscious realm and the conscious realm and that what i mean by that is in a meditative state so say for example you when you meditate it makes you in more in control of your conscious state so you're fully in control of your mind when you are in a awake state and when you're sleeping you're able to lucid dream um i can't remember anymore but the last one that i do remember i've been saving this one guys it's been down there i don't know what that finger's been doing so uh maybe don't yeah don't come near but basically the last one that i do remember is that every man should be able to run and in well in another way you should be able to free run. So basically, you should be able to do parkour. Now, I feel like this is a hobby and maybe even a lifestyle that doesn't get talked about from what I can see at all in the self-improvement space and more so the manosphere. I feel like hob habits that kind of get talked about a lot in the manosphere are things such as public speaking, weight training, reading, fighting, um, you know, ability to get on camera and make videos and stuff like that. Uh, like dating, ability to attract women, uh, looks maxing. There's all these different things, and a lot of them literally just come down to looking good for women. But I don't feel like enough men take on the uh, this idea that one day you will have to run away from someone, or one day you will have to chase someone that stole your mum's purse or something along those lines. Like, fair enough, good that you're learning how to fight, good that you know you're, um, why is my nose itching so much, I don't know, but fair enough, you know, good, good that you're learning to fight, that good that you're looking jacked, good that you're big and you're strong and you know how to fight, and if someone did try and mug you on the street, you maybe have a better chance than everyone else, but if someone pulls a knife out on you, nine times out of ten, you ain't gonna fight, you're gonna wanna run, because fight, f well, fight, fly or freeze is like the main three options that you have. And I'm pretty sure you're in that situation, you're either going to freeze or fly. It's not a likely scenario that you're going to want to fight someone with a knife. So, chances are, 
the best thing to do would be to fly, which is obviously run away. Now, in a, not in every situation are you just going to be able to run in a straight line because you're going to get out of breath. The best situation that would be would be to actually climb away and get to somewhere where that person with the knife cannot get to because the average person is not good at climbing and is not going to be able to climb over a wall. Now, believe it or not, that might actually, you know, that might not seem like a big deal. Like climbing over a wall might not seem like a big deal. But to the majority of people, they might think, oh yeah, if I need to climb over a wall, of course I could do it. No, you can't though. Because realistically, when I didn't do parkour, even when I was in the early stages of my parkour journey, climbing over a wall is a lot harder than you would think. If you don't have the right technique, you could be stood there for a minute trying to figure out how to actually climb the wall. Now imagine, put yourself in a situation where you're getting chased by someone with a knife and you're trying to climb a wall, but you can't figure out the right technique to actually get up the wall. And you might think, oh yeah, adrenaline is going to help me out. But do you really want to chance it? Do you want to chance adrenaline helping you out when instead you could just learn how to jump over a wall? Now, there's a correct technique, which in obviously the parkour world is called a climb up. So that would be where you jump up the wall, you pull up, push up just like a muscle up, and then you keep your legs up on top of the wall, and then you continue over that wall or on that path. Now, m the vast majority of the population would not know how to do a climb up. And e I, even though I do, I still find it hard to do it sometimes. I mean, my arms could be aching from gym. It's mainly my triceps that would hinder me from actually being able to do a, a climb up. But m the majority of the population wouldn't know how to climb a wall as much as they might think that they do. And that's just one situation where parkour could help you. And there's so many more, literally. What I'm basically trying to say to you guys is, why is this something that's not been talked about enough in the self-improvement or manosphere space? Because obviously I've titled the video, this is something, why is this not talked about? Because it's something that would, could save lives and yet you're talking about fighting when you're not going to be able to fight in every single situation. If you're in a situation where there's 10 on one, you're not going to be able to fight your way out of that. Nine times out of 10, you're just going to get killed or stabbed or beat the fuck up. So why would you not learn parkour so that you could get away? Or why would you not learn it so that if you really have this massive ego and this massive amount of pride to where you're like, yeah, I could win in any fight, any situation. Fair enough. All right, buddy, you might be able to. Fair enough, man. But when the situation arises that you need to chase someone because someone's getting away with your mum's purse, for example, or, you know, your phone, if you need to chase them and they're jumping over walls and shit, you're going to be a lot more athletic and a lot more able and obviously able to do that than they are. And now that's just one sort of example as to why it should be part of a man's self-improvement journey. Parkour should be a major part of someone's self-improvement journey. That was just one part. Now, the second reason I believe that parkour should be actually introduced into the self-improvement space and part of the manosphere is because through my self through my self-improvement journey or more my parkour journey, I learned discipline and I learned how to actually get over things through parkour. Now, it's kind of ironic the way I'm saying get over things because that's kind of the whole aim of parkour is to get from A to B and that involves getting over objects or obstacles, should I say. But that's literally the point. 90% of parkour is getting over obstacles, whether that's physical obstacles or mental obstacles. Now, I believe that a lot of parkour is actually just mental obstacles. Because a lot of the people that actually get into parkour, most of them are physically fit and physically able to do these jumps. I believe that every human, if you have an able body and no injuries, is able to do a lot of the jumps what people in parkour do. Some of the major free runners, I reckon if you got someone random off the street who was able bodied, they could probably do a lot of those jumps. But it's just the whole mental block and not knowing the way to move your body in this certain way to actually be able to do those jumps. But... Most of the obstacles I've been able to overcome in my life, I've been taught how to overcome them because I've overcome mental blocks when it came to training free running. Literally, because I started parkour when I was around 16. And since I turned 16, is when I've had a lot more probably serious problems in my life since then. And I've been able to overcome them because I've learned how to overcome mental obstacles through parkour. Say, for example, there was a jump that I was scared to do. And I finally figured out how to do it. 
that was an example of me overcoming a mental block in my mind or a mental obstacle and then getting over that physical obstacle. Now that's two main reasons, if you guys have watched through this whole video, as to why free running slash parkour should be part of a man's self-improvement journey. Anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this one. Peace out.